call this meeting to order. Uh, Mrs. Childers, will you lead yes. us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We do have, <coughs> under communications, we do have a Patreon comment from Grace Finley. Hi, I'm Grace Finley. I'm 12 years old, and I'm going into the seventh grade of GMS. And this is my story. In December of last year, someone who I thought was my best friend started saying ugly things to me. It, at first it was, I don't like you, then it started to get to kill yourself. After it started, or after it started to get worse, I started self-harming. And on Jan January 6th of this year, I ended up at Vantage Point, a mental facility, because of how bad the bullying and self-harm got. When I got back to school, the best friend said sorry, so I became friends again. Three months later, the best friend started bullying me again, and this time it got a lot worse. So I went to the school counselor and I told him about my self-harm and the bullying. And he sent me to Springwoods, a facility. I, I was in, in and out of Springwoods. I've been in Springwoods four different times. After the fourth time of Springwoods, I was sent to a residential in California called Discovery. I was there for two months and I've been home for six weeks. I now feel better, but I never want someone else to go through this. So this is why I think having another counselor is a great idea. Students in middle school are struggling. Another counselor should help. Please use my story to make a difference for others. I'd be happy to help and share. Thank you for listening. Grace, thank, thank you. Grace, thank, you. Grace. 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 thank, thank you. you for being so brave. Very brave. Good job. All right. Is it me? It is your time to start. Right. Yes, it's my favorite part of the meeting when we get to welcome um, new staff members. So um, you have a handout, um, three resumes from the three um, new teachers who are with us today. So first, um, you know Seth Duke, but you haven't been introduced to Coach Seth Duke. So <laughs> Coach Duke, come on up. And you can share whatever you would like to with the board. Can I face this one? Face the board. Okay. Um, so, most of y'all know me already. I'm Seth Duke. Y'all are very familiar with my mother, Hope. Um, I grew up in Gravit. I went to two different colleges. I went to National Park, and then I went to the University of Ozarks. And then I just finished up my first semester of teaching and coaching at Lincoln. And now here I am. So, yeah. About as interesting as I get. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. You have a music career. I do have a little bit of a music career. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and going to be teaching... Science, Science and math, Haley. Okay. And so, how you feel about that? It's going to be a new experience, but you know, never better time to start than now. So right. We'll see how it goes. So, the <laughs> Seth Duke I know masters whatever, and we'll work and work and work yes, and hard. Yes, yeah. Right. I don't want to be just a coach that just teaches on the side. I want to, I want to focus on my teaching as well and really do a good job. So, we'll see. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you very much. Glad Thank to have you. you. Welcome home. Yes. Yeah, welcome yes. Home. Right. Next, I want to introduce you to Leah Larimore. Come on up, Leah. I am super excited to be adding Leah to our faculty. She um, is a Gravit resident, and I'll let you go ahead and share whatever you'd like to with the board. Okay, not sure. We'll see if it's going to be interesting or not. So, um, my name is Leah Larimore. I'm 30 years old. Um, me and my husband live in Gravit. We've lived here since 2018. Um, I graduated in 2016, actually December of 2016, um, with a degree in mathematics and a minor in education. Um, and then literally I graduated on a Saturday and I had a job offer that Monday. Um, and I went and taught um, mathematics at Harbor High School for two and a half years and then went over to Vinville High School for three years. Um, and so last semester I was actually with Tabby Crane um, as an intern with her because I'm also in the counseling program at Arkansas State. So I've been in that for, oh man, it feels like forever. Three and a half years, I think, three, maybe three. Um, so I've been in that program and I'll be done in about a year. So I was with her and I was able to see like the interactions between the staff and the kids and then the admin and the kids and the staff and the admin. And literally I was like, 
I need to be here. Mm -hmm. And so I applied for a counseling position, and I got offered this position, and I was like, absolutely. So I am stoked to be here. Yeah. Glad to have you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. So to make some connections, yes. there is a gravit lady who highly recommends you, Missy Todd, as we know her, uh, Missy <laughs> Waits. Yes, yes, I understand. I've yes. just learned that you and Kelsey are good yes, friends. Yes, we and are. Missy says you are an excellent math teacher. And those of us <laughs> that know Missy, she was an excellent math excellent. teacher. I don't excellent know that I fit in her category, but, but she was actually my mentor. That's why she said. Um, my first sister coming in, and like she retired that year. Okay. And I was like, listen, I don't know about this retirement thing. Like, I need you here the next year. Yep. Like, I loved her so much. She yep. was amazing. Yes. Yes. I'm great friends with Kelsey. So. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Welcome. Yeah. Awesome. Can you introduce your husband? Because I think he yes. has a really neat job, too, if you want to tell him what he does. He's like, oh, She's been talking about it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is my husband in the blue. Could you at least? Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, so um, we actually own a business in Gravit that we started what, just a few months ago. Um, Paint and body work. So um, we okay. have that. Yeah, really. We built a shop and we built our house. We decided to tack on a shop to it. And so he's been doing Paint and body for, what, for 12 years? Yeah. I think. Yeah, it's been a long time. He worked with his dad and his dad decided to retire. So we just decided to open our own. So. And well, good. Decided to open it here. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Glad to have you. Yes. Nice yeah. to see you all. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Next, introducing you to Courtney. Hello. Hello, Courtney. You met Courtney's husband, Justin, mm -hmm. last yes. week. And before Courtney goes, I have to say, I actually <laughs> have um, her yearbook pictures from first, second, and third, third. grade. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, I can't believe you got Courtney and grab it. You are so lucky. So very lucky to have you yeah. and your Thank you. So, yeah. yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Um, just excited to be back in Northwest Arkansas. So originally I'm from Springdale. Um, my mom was a basketball coach and a teacher um, in Springdale at Central Junior High. Um, so I grew up in a school family. You know, my mom was a teacher and a coach. Um, never really left the school, so... Mm -hmm. I um, graduated from the University of Arkansas where I met my husband. Um, I was actually originally going to school to be an ag teacher, so that's how we met. We were in some of the same classes because um, he was animal science. I decided to go the special education route, so I did get my master's in special education from the University of Arkansas um, and taught it in Springdale for three years. And this will be my sixth year teaching special education. So I just taught in College Station for three years special education. Um, and then just excited to be back here and doing what I love and being around family and we actually ironically got married in Gravis so it's oh. like full circle we're back home and with our people and where we want to be so. very good how exciting and is your little one better yes okay. he is doing much better All right. he has some crazy virus yeah. I don't know. he's All doing right. a lot better All yeah. right. yeah. Great. Thank you. welcome oh, uh -huh. thank welcome you. Welcome, guys. Um, you'll see a flip-flopped action in superintendent tonight. Um, there are also several items that have an asterisk next to them that we added to the agenda, or I'm asking for you to add to the agenda after packets went out. So. Um, Probably need, need a, a motion, motion to add those items. We'll make a motion to add the asterisk items to the action items. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. <coughs> So we customarily go into executive before any new hires or resignations. <coughs> um, we have one item that's doesn't include employment, so we can 
do that and then come back. <clears throat> All right, we'll go ahead and do that one action item. So in your packet, um, after tab two, it starts on page six, is the teacher and administrator recruitment and retention plan. Um, this used to be called the minority teacher recruitment plan, but they have changed it and changed some of the requirements and the format of that. And there are three goals that had to be included in that plan. Um, one had to do with recruitment, another one had to do with retention, and then the third goal was about um, how to encourage students, our high school students, um, that are going into education and what we can do to support more people going into the field of education. Um, so, are there any questions about that plan? I left it pretty simple. We do more than this, um, but we left it pretty simple for the state requirements just to, to meet the goals and I'm moving we approve the posting of the annual teacher administrator recruitment plan to the Gravit School District website. Sorry about that. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Okay. All right. We are going to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing employment. And it's 613. <coughs>
Ready? All right, seven board members met in executive session for the purpose of discussing the following items pursuant to the Arkansas Freedom of Information Act 93 as amended employment. No other items were discussed and no votes were taken on any items. All right. All right, action item A. Nope, action item B. Mm -hmm. um, seek approval for resignations, which can be found on pages 16 to 18. I move that we accept the resignation of Leslie and Grayson. Can I do them both together? Sure. I move that we accept the resignation of Tina Wellesley. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Action item C, seek approval for 21st Century Community Learning Center pay rates for the 2022-2023 school year. And that's on pages 19 and 20. I move that we approve the proposed pay rate schedule for all 21st Century Grant employees. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passed. Item D, seek approval for adjustment and substitute pay for the 2022-2023 school year. It's on page 21 and there was an additional handout um, with information about substitute rates in other districts. What they are at this time, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I move that we approve the following compensation package for substitute teachers during the 2022-2023 school year to be paid out of our operating budget, certified 110 a day, classified 95 a day, long-term 120 a day, and free lunch on the days they work in our district. Substitute compensation is paid out of the operating budget. I probably didn't need to read that. Sorry. Second. All right. <coughs> Any discussion? I, uh, I had a question. Uh -huh. Did, Dennis, we don't know how many days we have subs, right? Or last year? I mean, we don't have any way to estimate this. Or do we? We could probably pull that data if we need to our system. Last year wasn't a normal year because we had a big COVID outbreak in September and another one in January. But, we don't really know. But we could get that information. Other questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passed. The next item is to seek approval to hire 21st Century Community Learning Center site coordinators. And the first one is on page 22 through 29, and the second one is 36 to 45. So I think both of the motions were on page 22. I move that we approve of hiring Amanda Lester as a 21st, 21st century site coordinator for the 22-23 school year at the grant approved rate not to exceed $30 per hour within a maximum of 10 hours per week. Second. Either Brad or Yeah, Brad or <laughs> Matt. All right, questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passed. I move that we approve the hiring of Nika Lindquist as a 21st century site coordinator for the 22-23 school year at the grant approved pay rate not to exceed $30 per hour with a maximum of 10 hours per week. Check. All right. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passed. Item F, seek approval to hire a yearbook assistant. It's on page 53, and there was an additional handout um, which outlines the supplement to the certified salary schedule, um, which is the stipend index. I move that we approve Edward Griffith with the position of assistant yearbook sponsor with a stipend of 0.020. Second. All right. Questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Item G, 
on page 54, seek approval for involuntary transfer of Amanda Carnahan to grab an upper elementary CCEIS grant position. I move that we approve the involuntary transfer of Amanda Carnahan to serve as a CCEIS grant special education paraprofessional. I grab her up, grab it, upper elementary school at her same rate of pay to be paid out of CCEIS grant funds for the 22-23 school year. Second. All right. Questions or discussion? <coughs> All this, oh, okay. This is a one-year grant, and so if we don't receive the grant for the next year, does she go back to her? We could absorb her back as a special ed parent, yes. Okay. She's also um, working on her special education certification, and so she will be seeking certified special ed jobs as soon as she completes that certification, which should be within the school year. Other questions? All those in favor say aye. aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passed. Item H is page one of the extra packet that, um, mm -hmm. that was at your spot. And so this is seek <laughs> approval for involuntary transfer of Addison Masters to Gravit High School assistant basketball coach. I move that we approve an involuntary transfer additional coaching role, role for Addison Masters as an assistant varsity basketball coach with the additional assistant senior basketball coach stipend of 2175 for the 22-23 school year. Second. Uh, questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion passed. Item I is page two of the additional packet that you received, and that is to seek approval for the involuntary transfer of Grace Dugan to Gravit Middle School PE and head junior high basketball coach. I move that we approve an involuntary transfer of Grace Dugan from one year only, ESSER funded, Glenn A. Guffey Elementary Physical Education position to the Gravit Middle School Physical Education teacher and head junior high basketball coach, assistant varsity basketball coach positions on the bachelor's degree salary step one and an additional stipend for head junior high basketball of $3,262.50 and assistant senior basketball $2,175 for a total compensation of $48,937.50 beginning the 22-23 school year. Second. All right, questions, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Item J is on pages 55 to 57 of the board packet and it's seek, seek approval for voluntary transfer of Tabby Crane to Gravit Middle School one year only counselor position. I move that we approve the voluntary transfer of Tabby Crane to serve as a CCEIS grant ESSER counselor for Gravit Middle School at her same rate of pay to be paid out of CCEIS and ESSER two grant funds for the 22-23 school year. Second. Any discussion, questions? I just have, so it's half S or half C C E I S, correct. correct? And then what happens after the one year? Just tell me. She go would back? go back to yes. Other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Item K is on page fifty eight in your packet. Seek approval to hire a bus driver. Motion to employ Dave Clark as a bus driver for the Gravit School District. Second. Any questions, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Item L is on pages 59 to 69 in your packet. Seek approval to hire a special education paraprofessional. I move that we approve the hire Samantha Pritchett as an instructional assistant paraprofessional special education on a 179 day contract, step one, for total compensation of 18.5. Uh, any questions or discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Item M can be found on pages 70 to 79, and it's seek approval to hire Gravit High School Library A. I move that we approve Ms. Melissa Keller as the half-time library aide for Gravit High School on step one of the library aide salary schedule for a total salary 
of 8623 for the 22-23 school year. Second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Item N can be found on page 80 in your packet and it's seek approval to hire Gravit High School Cafeteria Manager. <coughs> Motion to employ, employ Arissa Blakesley as the high school kitchen manager on step two of the manager and training lane for 180 days with a yearly salary of 17727 for the 22-23 school year. All right. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Item O is in the additional packet, pages 3 to 13. And that is seek approval to hire Gravit Middle School career teacher. I move that we approve. Is this spring? No. Not Brendan Mize, right? Am I yeah, yes. Natalie yes. No, yeah. Natalie Bernard, page three of the extra packet. Oh, yeah, right here. Right. 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 I do. Eye drops. I move that we approve Natalie Renaud to teach careers at Gravit Middle School on the master's degree salary schedule, step four with a 205 day CTE contract for 52-161-71, beginning with the 22-23 school year. Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Item P, um, also in the additional um, packet, pages 14 to 23, seek approval to hire Gravit Upper Elementary fifth grade teacher. And um, this is a change that, um, from what you received in your digital packet. Everything in italics is what was changed from what was in your original. Um, I would like to hire um, Ms. Devaney, Mrs. Devaney on a one year only contract because we have a one year only contract in our fifth grade right now since Sierra Fitz moved from fifth grade into a one year only ESSER position. And it's customary for the last hire to have the one year only. And so that's why um, we're recommending her for the one year only. And she is aware. I move that we approve Andrea Devaney to teach fifth grade at Grabber Upper. Gravit Upper Elementary School on a bachelor's degree salary schedule, step one, $43,500 on a one-year only contract beginning 22-23 school year. Second. All right. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Item Q is in the additional packet on page 24. And it's seek approval to transfer Gravit Upper Elementary fifth grade teacher to a continuing contract. So this is the second to last hire, and um, she would now have seniority over the hire that you just made. And so um, I'm recommending that we transfer her to the continuing contract position. I move that we approve transferring Sean Sparks one year only fifth grade position to a continuing contract beginning 22-23 school year. Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Item R is in the original packet, pages 81 to 94. Seek approval to hire Gravit Upper Elementary one year only guidance counselor. I move that we approve Brendan Mize as the counselor for GUE on a one year only 200 day contract on step one of the master's degree salary schedule making 46845 for the 22-23 school year. Second. Right. Any questions or discussion? He does understand it's a one year only. He right? does. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Okay, item S is in the additional packet on pages 25 to 34, and that item is to seek approval to hire Lynn A. Duffy Elementary School second grade teacher. I move that we approve Claire Jones to teach 
second grade at Glen Aid at the elementary school on a bachelor's degree salary schedule, step one for 43.5, beginning in the 22-23 school year. Second. Uh, questions or discussion? I'm going to abstain from this vote as she's been employed as a nanny for me. So, All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Our next item, T, is in our original packet from pages 95 to 106. Seek approval to hire Glenn A. Duffy Elementary School Registrar. I move that we approve Emily Wagner as the registrar for Glenn A. Duffy Elementary School on step four of the building secretary salary schedule, making 21467 for the 22-23 school year. All right, any questions or discussion? How did we come up with her on step four? Is that did I just miss that one? Really? Based on her prior experience, it was she had prior related experience on the way back. She had six years of experience that was related, but not in a school setting. So she was given credit for half of those six. Other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. And I can tell you she um, she knew that she did not have a job until the board voted tonight, but she wanted to learn everything that she could from Kizzy. And she has been working really, really hard. Sure six of them this first <laughs> working, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Just volunteering so she can. Mm -hmm. could get a good handle on things if she were to be approved tonight. Item U, um, pages 107 to 116 in the packet, seek approval to hire Glenn A. Duffy <coughs> Elementary Lunch Duty Aid. I move that we approve Melissa Williams as a lunch duty aid for Glenn A. Duffy Elementary School at a rate of $11 an hour for the 22-23 school year. Okay. All right, any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passed. Okay. The next um, items are item B, and it's pages 117 to 173 in your original packet. However, all of the motions are on page 117, and it's seek approval to hire Glenn A. Duffy Elementary Kindergarten back to school support. I move that we approve. Emily Barnes, Courtney Roten, Julie Chironota, mm -hmm. Carissa Llewellyn, Daniel Brewer, Brittany Hope, Hop, and Megan Milford to serve as kindergarten and back to school support aides according to the timelines listed above at a rate of $100 per day for the 22-23 school year. Second. Questions or discussion? Uh, do you really think it's going to take nine weeks? It, it depends on it depends on the students yep. and um, in their mix. It may not take nine weeks. It may take longer. Um, you never know. We wanted to give those people a set amount of time so that they could plan around it. Other questions? Discussion? And this will be a good way for us to know for future years if that, you know, if that was more support than they needed or if it was just right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. We'll move to the <coughs> superintendent report part of the board meeting. And on page 175, starts a workshop for the board on um, the 2022 vision and truths. 
This is something that ordinarily we might have done in a work session, but to keep from adding a work session, we'll do it as part of this board meeting. And so the powers and duties of the board are to develop and adopt policies to affect the vision, mission, and direction of the district. So all of the conversations we have at every meeting regarding policies and direction that we want the board to go, or that, um, that the board wants the district to go, all play into um, what I select, what principals select, what teachers select as their goals, as their personal, personal missions, um, to make sure that, that what we're doing aligns with the philosophy of the community. And the district already has foundational pillars of safety, personalization, student and staff achievement, and partnerships. But what, um, and we have goals aligned to each one of those that were approved recently by the board. But having established pillars and goals is not enough to ensure that every day all of our staff members know our shared purpose so they can live it and walk it and help others capture it. You know, we've hired a lot of new people and so we want to be able to say, this is what Gravit is about. This is what, um, what we want for the people that come to, to work here and to serve our students. And so um, we need to have that captured so that we have a way to help us um, on board as well as to live out each day. And it's very easy to get bogged down in the details of the day-to-day -day challenges of the work. And that's why we need a long-term vision statement to guide our efforts and help us plan long term. We need a vision statement, a mission statement, and a set of truths to serve as a guide for all we do. And um, I've said several times, um, if I had a hundred dollar bill in my pocket and I said I'd give anybody a hundred dollars who can recite our graduate mission statement that hangs on the wall that's with us at all times. Um, I don't think there's anybody that could do it unless they've heard me saying that over the last month and they've gotten busy reciting it just in case I, okay. I say it one more time. Um, but the truth is, if nobody knows what our mission is, if nobody knows what our vision is, then it doesn't mean anything to our district. It's just words on a paper. It doesn't really have meaning if nobody knows what it is because our vision and our mission should be affecting how we do our work every day. So over the next three weeks, I'm gonna be working um, collaboratively to create a vision, mission, and set of truths with our school board, our administrators. I'm gonna have an opportunity to meet with um, all staff next week to get their input and the development of the mission and truths as well. And so in the board packet, I had given you some information about what is a vision statement. People get vision and mission mixed up all the time. Um, vision is what do we want to become? What do we want to be known as? What is it in the future that we want to achieve? The mission is what do we do every day as we work to achieve that vision, to achieve um, that what do we want to become. And so I gave you some, some rules and best practices for writing a vision statement and then invited you to do some homework to come up with your own vision statement. And so in front of you, you have um, sticky notes and you have a marker. And so um, what I would love for you to do is um, if you came up with one or two or three, however many you came up with, if you'll put each one that you came up with on a separate sticky note. So um, if you came up with three, you'll need three sticky notes. So if you'll write it out on your sticky note and hand it to me, I'll put it um, on our chart over there. And I'll give you, you can just hold it up when you have one written and I'll stick it up. Fit it off or someone can read it.
pig. Mm -hmm. Number six. I can stuck together. Be fair, mine was long enough to be three. Sure. So mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> I only had two, so. Over to you, Ryan. So this time, when I read through it, 
I want you to listen for patterns in words. So as an example, if, as, as if I'm reading, you keep hearing the word orange, um, then that would be one you would think of. So I'm going to read through it again. Listen for patterns in words, and then when I get to the end, I'll have you um, just kind of share out, popcorn out, um, what words or what reoccurring theme you thought you were hearing in these. Our vision is to be the best school district that takes pride in all we do. To educate, equip, and enable the next generation of our community. Keep moving forward, pushing for excellence, leaving the lion heritage. Student achievement. We want to become the school of choice for all. Molding students to become productive adults for the future ahead. Preparing the students of Gravit to compete on a national level in the workforce. To safely and effectively educate the next generation of community leaders. Our vision is to build a safe learning environment that provides every student with the resources to thrive. We will provide a culture of inspiring education that promotes the community to trust and invest in the Gravit School District. Family values and cultures. Tomorrow's success is today's hard work and our lion pride is worth it. A small town growing purpose-driven graduates. Every child and adult matters. It's our school, our family, our lion pride. Let's go Lions. To provide the highest level of education and teach our students to be accountable and responsible adults as they graduate high school. Lions, it's who we are, striving for excellence for the next generation of lion pride. Everything for the orange and black. <clears throat> so what would be some words or categories of words even that you heard a pattern of? Community. Community. Do I have any? Community. Community. Pride. 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 Mentioned so Excellence. Excellence. Mm -hmm. Education. Education. Future. Lions. Lions. say inclusion, it wasn't that word, but there were several mentions of like everyone, sure. every student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, students, of course. Preparation. Did we miss any teacher? I don't think so. Okay. Okay. I, I, can go, I can go back <laughs> to the word count. But, but what's interesting about doing it this way is your ears hear what's on your heart. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is as much or more valid as an actual mm -hmm. word count. Mm -hmm. um, so Last week, I did this with our 15 um, administrators and department heads, and so I have their list uh -huh. of words, which is interesting um, uh -huh. because they 
also had all, they had future, they had community, they had competitive, um, very mm -hmm. similar to yours. They, um, they also had lifelong mm -hmm. leaders, safe, empowered, mm -hmm. and achieve. But achieve is kind of an excellence mm -hmm. or an educate word to achieve this. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised that pride wasn't on our list because we talked about pride a lot. So that's a common theme Absolutely. between our administrators and our board. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And community is also so a lot like family. family. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and our big heart words and work on crafting a vision statement using these things from the board and from the administrators. And next week, when I meet with the teachers, I'll be able to say, this is the vision for the district. This is what we want to become. This is what we want to be known as. And then I'm going to have the teachers do something very similar to this. But in the mission statement, it is, so when we work every day, what do we do on a daily basis to achieve this? When you have new people coming into your apartment and your grade level, what are we going to say, hey, this is what, this is how we do it. These are our steps. And um, I'll do that with all four buildings, and then I'll be able to share that as well. The next step that I want to do tonight, um, in your packet, I refer to those as truths. And I really um, am excited to have more input on this. And so in the packet, I talked about how important it is to set expectations for your team. And um, I am one of the board's team members. Our principals are on the board's team. Our teachers and our bus drivers and custodians and food service are all on, we're all on the same team. And people want to know what to expect. Our teachers who've been here 20 years want to know what to expect. And our brand new teachers coming in want to know what to expect. I'm sure um, when we have our new teacher orientation coming up this week, that's one of the things that they, is top of their list is, you know, what are the expectations? Because people don't like to be surprised. And so having a list of truths um, leads to great conversations about how we work and how we need to work to support our students. It, um, it helps us set a baseline for our work so that the team can take pride in our culture and what it takes to succeed. It also helps with recruiting. So when I'm interviewing um, new candidates for the district and principals are interviewing new candidates for the district, we can say, this is what, this is what working in Gravit is all about. This is what's important to us. Um, talk to me about some of the things on this list. You know, how do you think that matches with your philosophy? <coughs> Um, and we can use these truths when talking to potential candidates about what it's like to work and thrive in our district. So what is the Gravit Lion Way? Like if somebody came up to you and said, what's the Gravit Lion Way? What is it about the Gravit School District and how you do your work? Um, or if somebody sees a teacher do something or hearing, hear me making a statement and say, you know, what is that? I would love to be able to say, the Gravit Lion Way. That's how we do it here. That's how we do our business. And so another piece of the board's homework um, for tonight was if there are things um, that are important to you to be listed as a part of our Gravit Lion Way, I wanted to, to capture that. And so the part of the homework says, what are the expectations of working in the Gravit School District? Who are we as a collective when we're at our very best? How do we behave? 
And who do we want to be in every aspect of our service to students and families and each other? What beliefs and behaviors do we want associated with the Gravit School District? And so I'm going to have you get out your sticky note pad and your marker one more time and um, start writing those down and I'll put those on our charts. So when you're ready, just you looking for words up. or phrases? It can be words, it can be phrases, any, any and all of the above. You notice there were no rules for how to write mm -hmm. this one.
but then everybody um, has worth. Reaching out to and for help. Um, both of these talked about um, pride in our community, pride in our work, inspiring, striving to be better, high expectations. These three um, had to do with accountability, um, measure and daily learning to increase state test scores, and then meaningful conversations to redirect both students and employees whenever necessary so all succeed. So all three of those had to do with accountability. Honesty, hardworking, provide compassion and consistency. Um, I have two for discipline. And this one, um, there's three Ds. It's a thing that we, dedication, discipline, and diligence. Dedication to all students, discipline, work toward the common goal of education, and diligence in creating a firm foundation for all students to build, um, to build on for life. Responsible. These three talked about service, pursue excellence through service, service others before self. Um, I clump these together as joy and passion and energy, determination, family, and it had collaborate, so I put family, um, also innovative, safe and organized, communication, authentic, kind, active listeners, and community values. And so, um, I'm going to also do this same page with the teachers in every school, and then I'll be able to find a really big wall mm -hmm. and clump all the sticky notes together from across the district to see what are those things that are really important to us. What are all of those things that collectively we value, and it's important that it's a part of who we are every day. So thank you mm -hmm. for taking time to think about that and reflect on that. Um, before we close, any comments or questions that anybody has about the process and what we did or what we're doing next? I have a, I have a thought on a vision statement. I, thought, I did some research, obviously, look at mm -hmm. other schools and think about, like, what does a vision statement mean and how does it make me better at my job, right? Yes. Like, and I was thinking about my job. You know, you onboard your first day. It's cool to have a vision statement, but I think when you really need it is on your bad days. So, you know, to remind you of why you're here and what your vision is. So as we look to create a vision, you know, how do we support, you know, when it gets to May 1st, yeah. you know, and teachers are ready to be done, right? Or second week of school, the kindergarten teacher, you know, that vision to help support them in their bad days. Absolutely. Cool exercise. And when you wonder if we're all on the same page or not, it's yeah. fun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to see that we do have a lot of commonalities in what's important. Okay, the next item is the employment report. And I just, this time of year, I get, give that to you in every meeting. So um, you'll have another new one in two weeks that reflects mm -hmm. what we did tonight. But I don't know if you have any questions about this. Okay. The next item in your original agenda on pages 182 and 183, I wanted to have a staffing conversation with the board tonight because the next time we meet will be August 15th, which is after new teacher orientation, after back to school professional development, and after open houses. And so, um, if we do more hiring at the next meeting, um, it's just two days before before school starts. And um, enrollment and drops and ads really just got started today. Anybody who's moved in over the summer, anybody who's moved out over the summer, we are just today starting to get those enrollments and those drops from other districts and we'll continue to get those over the next two weeks and so right now we um, our best guess at who is coming is taking what we had on the last day of school and advancing all of that up to the next school year 
and then just as we enroll, add those numbers, and as people drop, subtract those numbers, um, there's no way to predict who will enroll or drop tomorrow, or who will enroll or drop Friday, or next week. And so, what I, um, the direction I wanted from the board is, if we um, really grow in the next two weeks, or if our enrollment shifts in the next two weeks, what are your preferences in terms of adding additional teachers if a grade level goes a little bit over versus opening up split classes? Um, obviously, we will not hire anybody except through the board and that board meeting on the 15th. But in terms of giving our administrators time to do master schedules and to find the classroom space, um, and to work on dividing up class list, if we at least knew um, the structure of classes, um, even if we didn't know exactly who was going to be teaching it, it would be really helpful. Um, I can't guarantee that we won't have to add teachers or move kids around after school starts, um, because in Arkansas we have you know, class size compliance requirements. So, um, the information that I shared with you talks about the class size limits in Arkansas. Um, I shared with you that the minimum cost of adding a new teacher, if we can find them this time of year, is about 53200 per new teacher, and that's if it's someone without experience. Um, the cost of a split classroom um, would be zero. The option of adding new teachers, if we could, um, let me back up. Some options to keep in mind. Adding new teachers, if we can find them, at a cost to the district of a minimum of 53200 per new teacher and requiring additional classroom space, which is, um, all of our classrooms are full. However, there are some people that don't have home rooms that could share or go on a cart or be in a different situation where we could add um, a few classrooms here and there if we needed to. It would just mean uprooting um, some people in some programs. The cost of a split classroom would be zero with no additional classroom space required. Um, because if we split, there's already a teacher in that room. Another option would be to add new teachers if we can find them, again, at the minimum cost of 53200 or reassigning current non-homeroom teachers to classrooms, resulting in a loss of services to students and support to teachers. Um, that would be without additional costs, and it may or may not require additional classroom space. So if, that just means if we decide we want to open another classroom and we have no applicants, um, you know, we could look at moving one of our certified teachers that's in a non-homeroom role into that. It would just mean a loss of service to students, um, probably in some kind of intervention position. Um, we would, it would have to be, we would be limited in the amount of that that we could do. For instance, um, with our Title I funds, we're required to have a certain amount of support, so we couldn't say we're gonna recoup all of our you know, Title I teachers. So there, there's some limitations in that, um, but there is a little bit of, um, of fudging in that. Um, for instance, you know, we've hired several people in some extra ESSER positions that we could move back into the classroom. I'm certain it would make those people sad because they're excited about this new opportunity. And again, it would be a loss of services to students, but those are some choices. So you see the enrollment reality as of July 18th at the bottom of page 182. Kindergarten was at 115, 
Um, seven teachers has a capacity of 140. Um, Nikki shared with me that she enrolled 15 today. So you can do the math and see how much room we have left in kinder. And last year we did have eight sections of kindergarten. Um, hoping that it was an anomaly, we um, cut back on a section. So that's what we have right now, seven. Um, one of my mentors always said hope is not a plan. So, uh, but the other part of that is if we had stayed staffed for 160 and that 115 held, then that's also not being a good um, steward of our finances. And so kindergarten's tricky because we we can't just graduate those up to the next grade level. We don't we don't know who's coming all the time. First grade, we have 153, and we had 153 enrolled in the middle of July um, with six and a half teachers. That's a capacity of 162. Second grade, 122 with five and a half teachers, and that's a capacity of 137. Third grade, 141. Six teachers has a capacity of 150. Fourth grade, 117. Five teachers has a capacity of 140. And fifth grade, 153, six teachers has a capacity of 168. And with, with a growth increase, it's going to hit us more substantially in elementary grades because of those class size limits. The way limits work 6 through 12 is a little bit different. They can have 150 students in a day. Um, it's not per class period. And so um, I can't guarantee that we won't need to add any sections of anything in 6 through 12, but the problem usually hits more with elementary. And so first and third grades are the grades um, that I was most concerned about when I typed this up, but now you can add kindergarten to that list. Um, Dissolving the first second grade split class that currently exists and opening a new full first grade classroom would increase the first grade capacity to 175 and the second grade capacity to 150. The cost of that would be 53,200 and a classroom space <coughs> or shift of an, of an existing non-classroom teacher at diminished services. This would allow for third grade overflow, which you see, um, Two weeks ago, there was we just had about nine spots for third grade. This would allow third grade to overflow into either second grade or fourth grade if we wanted to do some splits because both second and fourth, as of right now, would have the capacity to, to do that without an additional cost to the district. Or if the board wants to avoid a, a second, third, or third, fourth split class, um, if we needed to open a new full third grade classroom and it's, it would expand the third grade capacity to 175, cost another 53,200 and additional classroom space. So um, being, being a good financial steward, my recommendation would be to create split classes when possible because we know the students are going to have a great teacher and hiring this time of year, if we can get applicants, we don't know um, the quality of the teacher. It prevents the need for additional classroom space. It saves the district money and it does not diminish any services that are available to students and teachers. However, I want to, um, to do whatever the board feels like is in the best interest. Um, we just love some feedback from you on opening full classes versus creating split classes if in the next couple of weeks we get into to a bind numbers wise. Can you explain logistically the what the split class means for the teachers and stuff? <coughs> no, and here's why. Um, I can give you some scenarios. Every Every split class I've ever done has had its own unique scenario. And so it depends, um, it depends on who the teachers are, who the students are, and you can set it up a wide variety of ways. So um, you, you could set it up where 
the teacher had both first grade and second grade as an example and taught all subjects to both. So they may do some whole group things, but then small group with first graders that we do first grade things, with second graders that we do second grade things. And um, you know, while they're working with first grade, the second grade students are working independently or perhaps an aide comes in to work with them. So it could be that way. It could be, and we're going to add something to that graph. It could be that, um, that you partner with another teacher in your grade level and maybe I do first and second grade math while you do first and second grade reading. So I'm not having to do all subject areas. I'm only having to do one. The way we currently have the first second grade split set up for Lynn Duffy is that um, the new ESSER reading specialist would do reading for first grade for the first grade students in the split class while the split teacher, Stormy Pruitt, does math for second grade and then they would switch and Stormy would do math for first and the reading specialist would do um, the literacy. It could also um, be really lopsided where you had 18 first graders and four second graders. And so if that's the case, um, you know, the way you manage it is completely different. So it really depends on the number of grade level. It depends on um, the level, the academic levels and the need of support of both sides. Um, it depends on what extra resources you're able to push into the classroom. Um, they're all different. With, with upper grade students, I've done some before that um, were single gender and put, um, in, in that case, put girls um, in the class who um, had some confidence and self-esteem issues and with the boys not being in there, they felt more comfortable speaking up and um, the fourth grade girls were mentors to the third grade girls. Um, so it, it really, I've never done one the same way twice. It, it depends on the teachers and their skills and passions and what students need. Sorry. How did the second and third grade split work out last year? Um, I, I think it, I mean, based on what I was told, it was hard. It was hard, but that it worked well for most. I can't say that it worked well for 100%. Um, I've been told that the teachers are really excited that their second graders are looping up to third grade and staying with them. So um, the students that they had as second graders will be with them again this year as third graders. So they'll already know half their class and have their routines established with half their class. Um, and so they're excited about, about that looping opportunity. Did you, what kind of feedback did you have? Did you get feedback from your second grade parents that went up? Um, no. I, I think that they were okay with it. They enjoyed, like I said, you said, going and getting those things. I think for the teachers, um, it was a little bit hard to collaborate just because of the two buildings. I don't think um, it would be as bad if within the same building. Um, but it, it is challenging. But I don't. I think as far as the parents, um, I think that the kids did fine in there, and they're excited to stay with those teachers again. So it would be best to keep it same building if we have to do it. Yeah. It, is, it is better that way. Um, you know, we had hoped originally that there would be times when the second graders at Upper could come and do second grade recess with Glenn Duffy or go um, on field trips or, um, but even things like being in the same musical program, it, you know, with Stephen being their music teacher, there really wasn't a way for them to be in the second grade. So when you go between buildings, it does make it harder. Especially if the weather's bad. Sure. When we do this, the split classes, is it a little surgical on what students go? Absolutely. Like based on like teacher? <coughs> yes. And I know this past year, you all tried to take volunteers. We did. So um, at Open House, we kind of explained the situation. And so we had them volunteer, and 
then we, we took those that volunteered and called them right before school started and, and made sure that they were still okay with it and, um, and moved those kids over. For some parents, if that means now you, both of your children are in the same building, you know, logistically, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, but also because students in a split class need to be really good independent workers because sometimes the teacher is, you know, with the other grade level. Um, 100% if there was a student or a family that volunteered and we didn't think that that was in the best interest of the student, we would have a conversation with them about that maybe that not being a good choice. And as long as there's still room in the other grade level, if they tried it for two weeks and it wasn't successful, as long as there was you know room in the other grade level, we could make a shift. Do you need a action? Um, it doesn't require action. More Thumbs direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since I don't, since I can't come to you and say, "Hey, I need a two-three split," or "Hey, I need another classroom at every grade level," it's hard for you to give me mm -hmm. action. But as people continue to enroll and I see numbers change. What do you want going through my head? <laughs> well, at this point, I mean, I think the best thing would be the split classes. I mean, the or pull the uh, teachers off of. Yeah. I mean, that way. I mean, it'd have to get pretty drastic to say, "Oh, we better hire some teachers." I mean, well, if you didn't have any. Plus, you, you don't have a clue what you're going to get. Yeah. Currently, um, I mean, Nikki and Mandy have continued to, to talk to prospective teachers just in case. And currently, we have um, some great people that would be interested but are not certified. And so, um, you know, that's just something we'd have to consider if, you know, Placing a child in a classroom for a year with with a non-certified teacher, so yeah. I, I think that'd be worst case scenario. Yeah. yeah, and we'll continue. I don't know if you've looked at the website or not, but we have um, K five teacher anticipated posted, so that if anybody is still looking, um, they can apply and we can get their information, just so we know. I think there's a consensus that the split class is. Okay. I'll do it. The last item that I want to share with you tonight um, is information about the ALC recommendation that came out last week. We haven't had a board meeting since that came out. And it's um, I have information for you on page 35 and 36 of your additional packet, your extra packet. And so, as you know, um, on July 21st, the Arkansas Legislative Council voted to expunge the vote by which they approved $500 million in spending authority for the Department of Education with ARP ESSER funds. And they recommended that ARP ESSER funds be used to give a $5,000 bonus to certified staff and a $2,500 bonus to classified staff. And so let me back up just a little bit and remind you that we have gotten ESSER funds in waves. And so we, um, the first bucket of money we got was ESSER 1 funds, which have to be completely zeroed out by September of 22. And so we're, you know, we're good there. Then ESSER 2 funds came and they have to be completely zeroed out by 23. And some supplemental services funds came out of ESSER, which were targeted for special education that um, Vicki has been working on expending. Then there was another little bucket um, out of ESSER funds called uh, Fund 166, which can be used on the same kinds of things that the operating budget can be spent on, and that was a tiny 
bucket. Um, I think maybe $75,000 of that 166 fund. And then ARP ESSER. And so what was rescinded was only the ARP ESSER part, not the other buckets, just that one bucket. I also shared with you what the United States Department of Education said about use of those funds because this money is federal money. It was given to all of the states um, as part of a federal grant to either prevent COVID, um, which is why a lot of districts have done HVAC projects, um, air quality projects, um, because if that money was for preventing COVID from happening in the future or responding to what has occurred because of COVID. And so when the U.S. Department of Education awarded ESSER funds to states, it noted the funds generally will not be used for bonuses, merit pay, or similar expenditures unless they are related to disruptions or closures resulting from COVID-19. This does not mean all bonuses, merit pay, or similar expenditures are unallowable, only those unrelated to COVID-related disruptions or closures. So in the time that I've been with the district, the board um, gave, two years ago, gave a $1,000 bonus, and that came out of operating funds. And this past winter, we gave a $500 bonus that did come out of ESSER funds. And we gave, we voted to give that back in January or February when we had a really big outbreak and teachers were having to do a lot of extra duties. They were having to do extra recess duty and extra lunch duty and sometimes they were having to cover for a colleague's class. And so when we wrote up that $500 bonus using ESSER funds, we, um, there was a justification for why we were giving teachers extra compensation for what they had to do because of the response to COVID. And all of the teachers signed that before they got their check that they understood that that was um, compensation for, for COVID. And so we have done a little one like that that we felt like was justifiable based on the circumstances. So I apologize for reading this to you because I know it's in front of you, but we may have others that are interested that don't have this. So, um, so this is my response, my current response based on what I know from what we've been told from the Arkansas Legislative Council and the U.S. Department of Education. The Gravit School District could not in good faith justify that a bonus paid to our employees out of ESSER funds at this time is related to disruptions or closures resulting from COVID-19. The Gravit School District has not had any challenges with recruiting or retaining employees as a result of COVID. To give the ALC recommended bonus would cost the Gravit School District approximately $1.5 million in ARPS or funds. If a federal legislative audit found the Gravit School District to have given the bonus in ways other than what the federal government grant intended, the Gravit School District would be responsible for repaying that $1.5 million to the federal government out of our local budget. I believe the risk is too high and would be too costly for the Gravit School District to take that chance. In addition, if the federal government in the next months or year were to allow um, that kind of bonus, the Gravit School District does not have $1.5 million remaining in ARP ESSER funds. At the close of the 2021-2022 fiscal year, there was 1.72 million still available for reimbursement from the state. According to our ARP ESSER budget plan that was approved by the state in 2021, the following funds are contractually obligated from that budget. Salaries and benefits for nine employees um, at a total of $584,244. And the ALE um, remodel Western Benton County Career Center expansion, $800,000. Budgeted but not contractually obligated items 
our summer school salaries, benefits, and supplies for the next two summers at $160,000, and after school tutoring salaries and benefits for the next two school years um, at $50,200. ARPS are funds that were budgeted during 2021-2022 that were not spent and have been carried over is $125,556. And so I want to go back to the top. Um, when I said we don't have the 1.5 million remaining in ESSER funds, we were required to budget 100% of the money. You know, every penny we were required to budget. And when, when our plan was approved, that gave us authority to move forward and start um, encumbering um, and obligating ourselves to those funds. ARP ESSER funds were given to school districts based on their free reduced lunch percentages. So every district got different amounts based on their percentage of free reduced lunch funds. There are some districts in the state that even initially didn't receive enough to give the required bonuses even if they hadn't spent a penny. And so that um, is another thing as superintendents that we've talked about is, um, you know, hating that even if some people were able to figure out a way to come up with it, the district right next to them may not have ever had that much money in the first place and how um, it just creates bigger inequities. It doesn't really solve the problem um, that we're trying to solve. So because that 1.3 million is already contractually obligated because we extended contracts to teachers and they signed those contracts. Um, it would be illegal and unethical to back out of contracts that have been mutually agreed upon by both parties and approved in official school board minutes, resulting in an expectation of work and compensation. And so when I think about all the things we talked about, about who we are, I would not want to go to those nine people, you know, in the next few weeks and say, you know, sorry, you don't have a job. I, I, I believe that we need to honor that, that that's very important. Therefore, if the bonuses were found to be legally allowable, which I don't believe they are, um, 335756 of the 1.5 million needed to comply with the recommendation is available for expenditure out of the AP, ARP ESSER budget fund. So we do have that, that tiny bit that would be available. It's also my personal opinion that our employees don't need another bonus. They need a raise that they can count on every year and apply to their personal budget without worrying and wondering if they're gonna get a bonus. All of the states surrounding Arkansas have recently raised teacher pay and now outrank us in teacher salaries. In order to remain competitive and to recruit new teachers to the profession, Arkansas and the Gravit School District must continue to make raising teacher salaries a priority. During the past two COVID years, which are the years supported by the ARP ESSER budget, the Gravit School District has awarded teachers $900 in raises out of the operating budget, $1,500 in bonuses out of ESSER funds and operating budget, and $1,300 in adjustments to longevity out of the operating budget. So during these past um, two years, the board has given $3,700 worth of raises and bonuses. It is my recommendation at this time, and of course that could change by the next time we meet based on um, information that we get, but at this time it's my recommendation that the school board work with Dennis Kursick to finalize the 2022-2023 school year budget in August and September, and we have a work session coming up on the budget. That we give the Arkansas Department of Education, the United States Department of Education, and the Arkansas Legislature a couple of months to react to the ALC's recommendation and that the school board uses the information gleaned from those two items 
to discuss the possibility of raises and bonuses at the October school board meeting with an emphasis on consideration of a pay raise while still remaining fiscally responsible in this challenging economic environment. So that's, that's my recommendation and I just, um, I love our teachers. We have really, really good teachers. We have good teachers that have been here with us a short amount of time, that have been here with us a long amount of time. And this summer we are adding some amazing people to our Gravit family. And um, I want to make sure that when we spend money and when we support them financially, that we're, we're doing right by them. And um, I think finding a way um, all at once or over time to contribute to raises is, is doing right by them. And not putting ourselves out there with a $1.5 million bonus right now that could result in a $3 million price tag if the federal audit um, is not supportive of that. Open it to the board for any comments. information yes and um, I will continue sharing information with you continue to, you know to share information with the staff um, I know that uh, legislature is going to be going into a special session soon I don't know what kinds of conversations will occur during the special session um, but it's likely that between now and October when we have a good solid budget and we know what our financial picture looks like um, that lots of things may have happened at the state and national level between now and then. And I do want to echo, because the board had already talked pre in previous months about paying raises for yes. our teachers and staff. So this is something that the board is close to yeah. our hearts and that we want to pay them what they're worth. Absolutely. Absolutely. So but pay, and, pay raises are is the way. Personally, I feel like yes. they deserve. It would be good to be equipped for that working session, you know, with some scenarios, like mm -hmm. of where the, we, we we don't know what's going to happen over the next two months. I got a pretty good idea, yeah. pretty good idea based on the law. Mm -hmm. um, but coming out of that, I think it's important for us to support teachers, and if we can, you know, like what are the scenarios that require that? Maybe they're possible, maybe they're not. Right. Um, but maybe make us say no. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, so I would encourage that. Anything else before we adjourn? Is there a motion? It's a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor? All right.